The heavens and the stars of Orion therein are as scrolls of scripture. Some will discern the signs of the times. Others will worship star gods. These star gods represent Satan, who is worshipped in the church through gospels that teach we can become saved by our own works. To include accepting Jesus, being baptized in water, or making confession of faith. But the constellations of Orion teach that God alone has the power to save. We begin in Amos chapter 5. Ye who turn judgment, that is the law of God, to wormwood, and leave off righteousness in the earth, seek him that maketh the seven stars of Orion. Throughout the Bible, God emphasizes that he is the creator who made the stars of Orion. This is in stark contrast to the idols of the star gods made by the hands of man. And when we trust in these idols, God warns that we have turned his law into wormwood. You may recall during our study of Revelation chapter eight, we learned that the star wormwood made the waters bitter, leading to the spiritual death of many. And we learned that they died because they began to worship graven images. These idols or images represent man's work or his attempt to become saved by his works. As we continue in Amos chapter 5, we see that these idols were made in the form of the star god, Chion. But ye have borne the tabernacle of Moloch, and Chion your images, the star of your God, which ye made yourselves. And so we see that the works of man's hands lead to wormwood, they lead to spiritual death. And therefore God is commanding us to seek him who made the stars of Orion. But in verse 27 of Amos chapter 5, God warns that we will be taken into captivity if we turn away from the true God. This warning is repeated in the New Testament, specifically Acts chapter 7 verse 42, where Stephen testified against Israel for worshiping the star god Chion, who is called Rephim. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, namely Amos. O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Rephim, that is Chion, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. You may recall that during our study of Babylon, we discovered that Israel is a figure of the church, which became like Babylon through the worship of graven images. In this respect, Revelation chapter 18 records that the church became a habitation of devils which according to Revelation chapter 9 verse 20 means she began to worship idols which in God's sight is akin to devil worship in the church. In Revelation chapter 9 verse 20 we read, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and the idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. And so, when we consider the star God that was made by the hands of men, God is informing us that this is akin to devil worship. 
It is why the church became like Babylon, which is the habitation of devils. But God is using the stars of Orion and Pleiades to teach that we must worship God alone, who made the stars of heaven, in contrast to the idols and false gospels made by man. In Job chapter 9, verse 7 through 9, God demonstrates his power and sovereignty over creation. Which commandeth the sun, and it riseth not, and sealeth up the stars, which alone spreadeth out the heavens, and treadeth upon the waves of the sea, which maketh Octurus, Orion, and Pleiades, the chambers of the south. Here, God is teaching us that he made the stars and seals them up even as he seals up with knowledge that we might discern the face of the sky, that is, the signs of the times. God also speaks about these constellations in Job chapter 38, where we read that God alone has the power to loose and bind Orion and Pleiades. This language reveals the seasons of God's salvation program as found in Scripture. In verse 31, we read, Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season, or canst thou guide Octurus with his sons? Knoweth thou the ordinances of God? And canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? This language agrees with Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, where we read that salvation is determined by God who binds and looses things on earth which have been already bound or loosed in heaven. And so Job chapter 38 is simply reminding us that the stars and the constellations of Orion and Pleiades serve as signs which inform us of the seasons of God's salvation program when we are loosed from the bondage of Satan and sin. But if we violate the ordinances of heaven as revealed in scripture, we will be punished according to Isaiah chapter 13 where once again we read about the constellations of Orion. For the stars of heaven and the constellations, that is Orion, thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in its going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, in the day of his fierce anger. So here, unlike Job 38, which offers the hope of salvation, Isaiah 13 concerns the burden that Babylon has for bringing many into bondage or captivity. Finally, many scholars have pondered about the meaning of the word Orion, which literally means fool. In this respect, Romans chapter 1 teaches that mankind should know that God is the creator as they behold the invisible things of his creation. He warns that they became fools. That's the word Orion in Hebrew for changing the uncorruptible God into an image. And this led them to change the truth of God into a lie. And as we learned earlier, the source of these lies is wormwood. Throughout the book of Acts, Paul warned against worshiping the host of heaven to include Jupiter and Mercurius, he preached that they must turn to God who made the earth and heavens. God not only made the heavens and the earth, but he has appointed a day when he will judge the world. 
And as Paul took this message into the world, many turned away from the worship of Diana and the idols of her star god, Jupiter. Similarly, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 3 through 4, we read that many will be turned to righteousness as the stars which shine brightly. The word righteousness is translated as the word cleansed in Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, where we read that the sanctuary is cleansed after 2300 days. That is, from 1994, when the abomination of desolation was set up in the church, to the year 2000-2001, when God's elect began to turn away from idol worship, that is, works gospels, while leaving the church. So we see that God has given us the signs of Orion in four passages to teach us. In Amos 5, he teaches us that we will die of wormwood if we continue to worship the star gods that is teach works gospels. Job 38, God alone can loose us from the bondage of Satan and sin that is Babylon. Job 9, God sealeth up the stars even as he seals up knowledge and increases knowledge so that we can understand the signs of the times. Finally, Isaiah chapter 13. God's elect lift up the banner to warn the world that God has appointed a day when he will judge the world, at which time the constellations of Orion, the sun, moon, and stars will be darkened Thus, signifying that the end has come, the light of the gospel is no longer going forth into the world.